Hello and welcome back to Factory Town. If you're watching this series in real time, you will uh, remember that yesterday I finished what was available in the campaign, the four levels that are available, and so now I'm going to begin a custom map. The plan for this series is to create a custom map where we basically pick up everything that we can pick up in the series, uh, make everything we can make, and see kind of uh, what all the game offers. Uh, as new campaign levels come available, I may take a few days off from the custom map to jump back into the campaign and play those new levels. Um, we'll just kind of have to time it time it appropriately to see. Uh, the so If you're watching the series after the fact, then just know that there's another series available on my, on my channel that goes through those campaign scenarios and kind of looks at the way that... Uh, the game designer wanted to feature the different aspects of the game um, and also the different challenging scenarios. So today we're going to look at the custom map generator. The custom map generator, I dragged it off to the side when I was looking at this a moment ago and uh, it stays off to the side apparently. So you can see here that there's a rather large map and uh, what I want to do first is talk about the scenario settings which is a combination of these settings below here. Uh, the first one is the rule set, and the different rule sets here control different buildings, different uh, items, different everything that's available on the map or not on the map, as the case may be. So if you're playing the default rule set, everything's available, I think everything, I'm assuming everything is available, and everything is um, kind of in the default, default mode, and then you can pick one of the other settings here uh, for example, Railmania disables some of the other uh, path types and worker types so that instead of having uh, being able to make, say, belts or chutes, now everything has to be on rails. But on the other hand, rails are much cheaper, and all that stuff can be controlled here in the rule set. Uh, the start state allows you to pick the age you want to start the game in, and uh, or you can customize that. And the victory conditions allow you to build custom victory conditions for the game you want to play. So this, you can see that by using these three things, this is how those campaign scenarios are made if you watch that series. And if you haven't, you should, uh, or at least play the campaigns yourself to kind of see how the, the game is, is, uh, is developed and how it kind of all works together. So uh, we're gonna use the default scenario, which uses the three defaults under these, uh, these other settings. Um, for, for the, at least for this initial map, we could try one of the other, one of the other ones at a later at a later date. Um, but I want to look at the, the starting map randomize uh, random generator here. So uh, I'll start off first with the map size, and we'll jump back up here at the end. What the map size do, does is it controls the, the actual size of the map. Now, when we start the new game, we'll see this that we have the middle four chunks, which is about this large of an area here. Uh, that's four chunks. You can kind of see kind of where the, the lines might be dividing them, where kind of the, the terrain didn't didn't work out quite right, uh, which is kind of funny in a way. But um, uh, because you can see the, the medium here has one, two, three, four, five, six chunks uh, by six. So that's a 36 chunk map. The small takes one off the whole way around. So it's only a five by five map, which is then a 25 chunk map. The large adds uh, one more chunk out from the medium. So that makes it an eight by eight. I'm sorry, the small is a four by four map. Uh, so this, uh, the large is an eight by eight map. So it gives you extra chunks around the outside. And then the infinite map is of course infinite. There are an infinite number of chunks. Um, I think we're gonna go with the medium size map. It's kind of the default, but I wanted to explain how the different uh, map configurations work. Uh, resources, you can control how many of each resource is available on the map uh, relative to the default amount. And I'm just going to leave it alone at the defaults. Smoothing the starting area just kind of flattens out the middle area of the middle, the starting four chunks, which I don't think is necessary. Uh, we can have the game auto place the base near essential resources. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to let the uh, let the game do that. So uh, we're going to do random. We're going to skip back up to the top and or skip random seed for right now, or random seed for right now. And the other thing I wanted to highlight here is these the spawn trading posts. Uh, there are eight trading posts somewhere on the map to the beginning of the game and we can control that number. 
So jumping back up here to the biome, because I want the random seed to be the last thing we do. The starting biome is what controls, uh, is what the biome that the middle four starting chunks are. In this case, it's plains and rivers. You can swap it around and make it any of these other biomes, uh, like mountain lakes or volcanic islands or craters or canyons, islands. You can do any of these things. There's also, uh, you can see all the different, oh, that's an interesting looking, low ridges. Um... Uh, Swamp forest. Okay. So you can see all the different biomes that the map offers. Plains and Rivers is kind of the default biome. Obviously, since it was one selected, but it's also kind of the one that's kind of most in the middle in terms of the uh, functionality of the game. So, in terms of like there's a little bit of hills, there's some water to deal with, there's a lot of resource chunks like, like trees and such, but uh, it's not too complicated. But the available biomes controls the biomes that are available in these outer chunks. The chunks are grouped into, uh, at least on the medium map, they're grouped into two by two uh, sections. So up here we have like a maybe mountain lakes or something. This is another uh, plains and rivers one. This looks like a canyony one. This one's pretty canyony as well. This looks like a, a, a lowland some kind of. That might be plains and rivers just with the corner cut off. This is like a swamp here. And then this is another like deep canyon of some kind over here. And then like the archipelago here, islands. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a random seed. And we're going to randomize the seed, I should say. And what that'll do is it'll pick another seed randomly. And it'll use the selected, the blue selected uh, biomes as options in the outer chunks so um and i'm going to leave those all the defaults the game defaults as well but we're just going to randomize the seed and see if we can find maybe another set of outer chunks that we kind of like i'd like to see at least one desert one in our chunk or in our in our seed uh just so that we have kind of the, the diversity and uh, now we get three desert ones i don't want three i want like one two would be okay let's see we have some uh, swampy area here but a lot of rivers and lakes and then that's like a that's like that ridges one is this what i want i don't think this is what i want either random okay one desert chunk some islands here uh that might be okay yeah we could do this one this looks good let's create this map Okay, so the first thing we need to do is place our base, but we need to decide where we want to place the base. I pause the game. Not that it's necessary, but uh, we have stone and trees. This is kind of the center. You can see now these are those center four chunks, and the extra chunks out here, you can only see the next one of each. Uh, they're, they're grayed out. They're unavailable. We can purchase them for yellow coins at a later date. So the initial stuff we want to start with is some stone, some trees, maybe some food of some kind. There's uh, what is it? tomatoes and grain and sugar up here. Also some berries. That's actually not a bad place to kind of start. Alternatively, over here we have potatoes and carrots. We could even start like maybe in this open area here. But I think maybe this large open area would be a good sort of uh, area for the houses. Maybe even if we clean these herbs up and, and harvested them. A large area for houses and markets and general stores and such. So maybe I'll put the base off to one side, like over here. Uh, that's probably a good place. So let's build the base in this general area over here, even even up here a little bit. Uh, and then we can, we can start playing the game. Let's unpause. We're going to start picking up stone, of course, and oopsie. And uh, wood, of course. And I think I'll just have do I want two on each, or do I want to not have two? Let's let's wait. And uh, the first thing we want to probably do is is build some houses now. And we need 15 wood, so maybe I need a second person picking up wood for right now. Oh, uh, you know what? We'll just put two on stone as well. We'll use a lot of stone to start with as well, because we need lumber mills and wells, and they or at least lumber mills, and they cost a lot. Okay, so we have enough wood for a house. Uh, let's put the house kind of... We can move these later, but let's put it kind of close to some of the food. Because we're going to have to uh, sneaker net it down to the house for now. 
And maybe I should use that uh, grain there. But I'm also going to pick this tomato and have the tomato be delivered to the house because the house can use anything in the food category. And then obviously there's the, the rest of the stuff as well that we can get through the, the later um, distribution methods that we saw when we played the campaign. So we're gonna pick tomatoes and that, like I showed, that counts as a vegetable. So carrots, tomatoes, and uh, potatoes all count as the same thing. So you don't need to deliver more than one of those to each house. You can, you don't need to. And then uh, fruit, which we I see we have berries over there uh, to the to the uh, to the left here. Those count as uh, fruit, which is berries, pears, and apples. Uh, so we want we're gonna want to do those as well. Vegetables only count as one yellow coin each. Uh, vegetables count or fruits count as two. And then you can see all the rest there, of which there's a lot. Okay, so we have a house. We have some some stuff going into it. Um, let's wait. Why can't I build? Oh, I need planks because I'm yeah. It's on a it's on a hill here. So that's probably what we're gonna need to start doing pretty quickly. Is making yeah. So now this worker's gonna deliver to both houses, which is good because you're delivering too much. And I want to do another worker uh, doing the same thing for fruit. And I'm not going to build paths just yet. I'll let them deal with that. Uh, the next thing we can build is a lumber mill. So we're going to go ahead and do that because we're going to need a lot of lumber. Uh, a lot of planks. So let's make planks. I'm going to take one of you and make you go into there instead. Planks, please. Thank you. And then we'll build another worker to take the planks to the base. And then I think the next thing to do is upgrade the base once we have five planks and five stone. I think we're going to have one of these stone miners switch and harvest this grain. This one piece of grain here. Because the grain goes into a different category here in the house. So now we have three categories uh, supplied. Whether it's satisfied or not, we'll find out. But that gives us up to three happiness per house. Which is really good for uh, worker morale in buildings and such uh, eventually. Uh, so let's upgrade the base. We have the materials for it. And that gives us an additional four housing, four houses. Uh, it gives us the grain mill, the food market, and the school. So we're going to have to build one of the, each of those. Uh, the grain mill is what I kind of want to start with. And so I want to start moving some of these houses around a little bit. I'm use the move button. And I have to build some structure here. So I'm going to use the structure blocks. One, two, three. There, there, there. And I'm probably going to move these houses times during this series, but at least for now, uh, they can go there. And then we'll build a grain mill. So build a grain mill. We don't have the planks yet. Because I used a bunch to build the scaffold blocks. Okay, come on, how many do I have? I can look up here, of course, and see that I have eight. Is the issue... We need more workers, so we need more houses. Put another house in here. We'll let the hoppers get all hopping over there. And then that gives us another four population, or two population, sorry. We had population of eight, six in here, and then two in the base. And I want to get another worker here, making or hauling more trees, more logs to the lumber mill. Two to one because the recipe is two to one. There's a distance thing with workers, but I'm not going to count that. Uh, we'll just go with what we have. Okay, so we should be able to build now a... Why not? Oh, because I've used a bunch more. There we go. Grain mill. So the grain mill is good because that allows us to turn grain into flour or animal feed, but flour to start with. And if we look at the house again, we can see that flour counts as four points, four coins, but grain only counts as one. So if we if we supply the grain to the grain mill, uh, we can turn three, effectively three coins, into four coins. 
which is really nice. Three times one becomes four. So now we need... I'm going to use a different... I'm going to let this one continue to mine this, maybe. Yeah, there's only eight left. While we build this up... No population capacity. Oh, right, because... So we built... We added a worker, and then the grain mill has one worker as well. So you can add houses... And you can upgrade houses. But be careful upgrading houses because they demand stuff from markets if you upgrade them. Uh, so you want to only upgrade a house when you have them, after you have a market. So at this point, we're better off building more houses, which we can have up to eight anyways. So we're better off building more houses than we are uh, in upgrading their levels. Okay, so now we can do another worker here. And we'll put grain into the grain mill. I'm just going to do one for now. And then we'll put a worker here that's taking the flower. You can see when you hover over a building with a worker selected, you have a supply row and a, a, uh, a deliver row. And you can say, I want the, a person to supply grain, supply the grain mill with grain, and they'll just kind of go to the nearest grain sp uh, sprout or grain stalk and pick it up and bring it back here automatically. But I like to do the, the right-click-drag method because then I can say I want you to pick from this stock. And then the deliver everything, uh, you can see if this has multiple outputs and you want it to deliver all of it to, say, a barn, which we'll get to in a minute, you can do that. Or you can right-click, you can, you can left-click on the flower symbol here and then click on a house. Or right-click on a house, sorry, right-click on a house. Or you can right-click-drag from the icon here to the house and again as long as all the houses are nearby each other the the worker will deliver the the uh will deliver the um the 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 item to the house that needs it a house that needs it uh we have a worker who's hauling grain now to to the houses we don't need anymore because they, they finished this grain over here and they instantly instantly came over here instead we're going to have them help out supplying the grain mill, which means that we're going to be oversupplying a little bit, I think, here, but that'll get leveled out once we have a little bit more going. The next thing, the next building we can build, and this is, it's kind of nice that the game lets you, or limits you on these methods to kind of help you learn. Uh, the next building that I'm going to build is the food market. That's going to simplify our uh, item delivery here, but once again, I'm going to need to move my houses around. And let's just put them... Is that all flat? It must be all flat. Move a couple of these houses this way. Yeah, they are all flat. Uh, and then if you if you select a, an, a a building block and you kind of right click on, it doesn't even have to do the same block. You kind of right click on them, it'll delete them off of the map. So let's build now a food market. And the food market will by default, uh, deliver to anything that is in or touching its yellow box around it. You can see the yellow box. So right here, it's, it'll deliver to the two houses that are that are highlighted in blue. You can see the little blue halo around them. But if I back off a little bit further, then it doesn't deliver to them anymore. But if I get this close, now those other two are, even though they're not in the square, they're touching the square, so it delivers to them. But that's not going to actually matter much, because what we're going to do is build the market here and then we're going to build a path from the market into the sort of little town area here and that once i build path around should now make the market deliver to four houses yes uh, just build the path all the way around and this will get again replaced in many times i'm sure over the course of the game so instead now of all this food getting delivered directly to the houses, what I want to do is take Mr. Flower here and deliver him to the food market. And now the food market's going to pick up that flower, and it's going to automatically distribute it to those four houses. And uh, Mr. Tomato here, same thing. And Mr. Berry here, uh, same thing. The food market's going to automatically, del automatically deliver it to any houses that are connected to it by roads in its circle of influence, which is a rather large circle. And that's why I said maybe later on in the game, we put the food market somewhere down in here, 
and we have that large, large area uh, for houses. So that's kind of the idea, at least. And you can see now that the food market is starting to, to back up supplies on the flour because all, none of the houses need it. So it's just getting stored here in the food market. And so we have full satisfaction here. Uh, or by the way, the, the food market has the thing here that shows you satisfaction by quantity of houses in its range. So we're completely satisfied. I can click actually to keep it here. We have complete uh, consumption and supp uh, supply of grains, regardless of which type it is, of grains to the um, to those four houses. Whereas with fruit down here, we only have 75% that are actively consuming and are happily supplied with the item. So one of the houses is missing some fruit. And that'll probably get resolved as we make a couple more changes here. And then vegetables, they're completely happy and satisfied with as well. One of the changes we can make, though, is we can take a path like this and let the uh, worker who's carrying... the fruit walk along a path and they'll move faster through the area and so will the worker carrying tomatoes so they all uh, kind of use the path to they, they move faster and it also provides the connectivity that the market needs uh, for additional houses later and by the worker moving faster now everybody is almost satisfied almost fully supplied with fruit and we could see, looks like this one. Um, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit short. So that'll get satisfied and fixed up over time. But we are getting 12 happiness points, which is great, uh, because that now has boosted us by 10% in our building worker performance. I don't know if that affects the individual workers or not. But the next, next thing we need to move on to is the school. The school allows us to research uh, these additional technologies that are available that we haven't unlocked yet all down here. Uh, so let's build a school, and I'm just going to build it, uh, well, I'm going to use my foreknowledge to build it someplace appropriate, which I think for us is going to be over here, somewhere, maybe about there. And the reason that I said foreknow, we need more housing, more housing. Let's do that. And then you can see this house instantly was supplied with more than enough grain. But it's taken a little while just because of the distance for both the tomatoes and the uh, berries. But they'll get they'll get satisfied with those over time as well. Okay, back here we go. We need to manually assign a worker now because we didn't have any to spare. So um, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and drop another house here. Just so that I have the extra capacity here. And the school allows us to research additional technologies. These other ones are locked behind one or more of these, but uh, we, we have the ability to do woodworking, which unlocks a, a bunch of buildings, including a barn, a crate, a workshop, chutes, uh, wagons, all kinds of different things that we can make in a workshop. Um, plenty of options here. And then we have the option for masonry that gives us the ability to make stone roads and such um, which are which you can they move faster on stone roads than they do on paths the workers do um, and also lets us uh, build the stone mason building I think for the purposes of this I'm gonna do woodworking first and we'll get we'll select that it won't work yet because in order to do this research we need time of course yellow coins which we are accumulating now that we're selling products as we're, as we sell products to the houses and then finally we need writing supplies. Uh, writing supplies, as you can see here, uh, there are a few options. Uh, we only have one to start the game with, uh, and that's paper. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, but later on in the game, we'll be able to use, uh, we'll be able to make books and then the enchanted books and the spell books. And the way that this works is each percent of woodworking out of 100 costs one writing supply, one yellow coin in two seconds. So. Uh, since paper is our first one, paper is worth one writing supply value, that means that we need to have 100 paper to unlock this first uh, recipe of woodworking. Or this first technology, I should say. 
So let's go ahead and set up the set up paper making. And that's done here at the lumber mill. Uh, I'm going to use my Q button to to eyedropper it. And uh, notice the lumber mill is highlighting some of the, the shoreline cells in blue. Um, what that is telling us is that there are... Uh, there's the possibility of connecting this to water. Now, unfortunately, the shoreline here is a bit rough. And so we're not actually going to use it, I don't think. Um, but I wanted to show this without placing that building. Let's go in here to the select recipe. Paper is made here, which is I kind of hinted at, but it needs wood and water. Uh, there's a few different ways to get water. One way is to take a worker and have them scoop it out of the out of the river or out of the ocean or whatever you have on your map water-wise, if you have water at all. So you obviously need water. Uh, scoop it out of the water and manually carry it to the school. That's not going to work very well. Uh, another option is to use a well. And a well can be made... Uh, a well can be built... can be built next to the water. And that will generate water faster, but it can also be built anywhere, and it'll generate water. The problem is, in order to link a well to a building, we need to have wooden pipes, which, as you may recall, is one of the things that is unlocked here. Fluid pipes made out of wood. Fluid pipes here is one of the things unlocked by this first recipe, so that's no good either. So what I want to do, actually, is move this school over here and build that lumber mill on this side of the map on the side of the trees. And the reason for that is this is a smooth uh, land here up to the water. And I can put the building on one of the blue tiles and the building turns blue. And it tells me down here in this link that it's linked to 75 tiles of water or 81 tiles of water or 79 tiles of water, depending on which which block you're, which, which tile you're sitting on. And so what this tells me is that I automatically it's, it's explicitly said down there but water will automatically be automatically supplied so I don't if I build the lumber mill adjacent to the water I don't have to worry about having a worker picking up buckets of water from the from the river I don't have to have a well where the workers are hauling buckets of water from the well I can just build the lumber mill adjacent to the water and it'll be basically like sucked up in the building automatically. And you can see that it is connected to the water here. Uh, it, it takes one water per second at the, at the normal speed here, uh, which is fine for basically every recipe uh, because we only need one water every four seconds here to make two paper, by the way. So we're gonna pick paper and we need someone providing trees and it's one log, one wood every four seconds. So one worker should be good on that. I'm going to give him a path to stand on. And then let's move this again one more time up closer to the lumber mill so I can take another worker here. Let me go over there, please. Thank you. And take the paper to the school. And by using these short path, these short distances uh, undercut by a path, that keeps uh, the worker's time to the minimum and allows us to do a lot of research. So we've already done six, seven, eight percent of the research here, which is really good, really good. Um, so we are consuming this grain at an alarming rate. Uh, well, not alarming, but I'm gonna add some more paths here just so they can keep hopping along. Um, eventually we'll make bread uh, because the houses also like to have bread, as you can see here, and that gives us a lot of coins. Uh, things like fish we could work on. We can work on things like beef as well once we have uh, pastures, which we don't have yet. Uh, basically, beef... I wonder if we can do fishing yet. Automatically yet. Uh, milk, butter. It's obviously made from milk. Uh, fruit juice would be good, but we all these things need a kitchen, and we don't have kitchens yet. So um, I wonder, though, if, if they can fish... If the workers can have housing capacity. Of course we don't. We can probably upgrade a house, but I wonder if the workers can fish. Yes, actually they can. All right, I'm gonna leave that worker there doing fishing, shore fishing off of the, off of the land here, 
and fishing those those bit of fish there. It's a long hike. It's not great. We'll improve it later, but I'm going to leave a worker doing that just because it's kind of fun. And so we're going to end this episode today by letting the woodworking researching finish because that's kind of what we need to to finish up uh, or to move on with this series. We don't have any other buildings we can make. We've made everything else but the well, and we talked about the well and how that works um, already. Uh, and then in the next episode, we'll we'll start working with the woodworking. Um, and we'll also start the research on the masonry and perhaps more. So I hope this was a good uh, first episode for you. Those of you who have been watching my uh, campaign series, you already have experienced some of the stuff that I talked about in sort of the middle of this episode, like the getting started in the map kind of kind of concept. But uh, if you're if you're new to my channel, if you're new to this series, uh, or new to the game in general, um, you might uh, you might have benefited from some of that explanation. Of, of how the game works and uh, I hope it was useful for for everyone so thank you all for joining me uh, oh now that we finished woodworking you can see that it tells us as we complete a research what it unlocks uh, barns crates workshops shoots wagons and a bunch of other stuff that we can make at the workshop as well these are just kind of the key items as part of the research so we're gonna end here uh, and in the next episode we will start the next research of masonry and then move on to some of the other researches as they become available, all the while expanding our production and our little town here. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.